in book four of the Aeneid, we, we get the famous story of Dido. Uh, Dido, the, the queen of Carthage, who's building the city of Carthage. Aeneas has arrived with his men at her court uh, via shipwreck. Um, she has welcomed them, indeed kind of offered them uh, part of her state. Uh, and uh, at the end of book one, Dido has given an elaborate banquet for the Trojans and is obviously interested in Aeneas. And in books two and three, we get the famous story where Aeneas sort of tells us his life story so far, uh, what happened at Troy, what's happened in the seven years between Troy and reaching Carthage. And what we get at the beginning of book four is Dido's reaction to this uh, great narrative, which basically is very positive. Uh, she, um, she finds him uh, very attractive and she is very impressed by uh, his narrative of his past, which at least partly has been aimed at her. He makes it very clear that he loses his wife, for example, but he also does make it clear that he has to go to Italy and won't be able to stay in Carthage. So book four begins with this interesting scene between the two sisters, between Anna, uh, the sister of Dido, and Dido herself. And for readers of the poem with some literary background, this is important because this is very like the opening scene of Sophocles' Antigone, where you have the tough sister who's going to do the tough business, Dido, Antigone, talking to the less tough sister who is trying to uh, make things more acceptable. Um, and uh, I think this is a hint that one of the important things in this book is going to be Greek tragedy. And of course it closes with a scene which is reminiscent of Greek tragedy when, when Dido passes to the underworld through the agency of a god, which is an echo of the end of Euripides' Hippolytus. So for the kind of learned reader, this dialogue at the beginning says, this is going to be a kind of Greek tragedy. But we also have the big issue of the book raised here, which is how reasonable is Dido's loyalty to her dead husband, Sichaeus? And she says, well, I really fancy Aeneas, but uh, I have sworn this oath never to marry again after the death of my dear Sichaeus, so I can't really do it. And her sister, her sister, her own sister, who's looking out for her interests, Anna, addresses her and says, basically, don't be so silly. Here's a really hot guy, exactly what you need in terms of your setting up of your city. Uh, why don't you think about it? And I think this puts in the mind of the reader, is Dido being unreasonable? Is she even being unreasonable in Roman terms to spend her whole life thinking about her dead husband? Because in Roman terms, when your partner died, essentially you got remarried. Augustus married four times. Um, it was what you were supposed to do, whether wife or husband, because the purpose of marriage in Roman terms is the generation of children. So one question that's raised here at the beginning of the book is, is Dido's loyalty to her husband, her dead husband, actually a reasonable thing? 